Today we have some buffs for the Chosen and the Venom Crawlers, and a nerf to the Lord of Change. Let's talk through the Chaos Points changes in Chapter Approved 2021. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focus 40k channel, where we've been going through the new chapter approved and seeing what has been buffed and nerfed with the new points costs. Today I thought we'd turn our attention to Chaos, we've already talked a bit about Bellacore this morning, so let's look through the rest of the Chaos Super Faction, Chaos Space Marines, Death Guard Thousand Sons, Demons and Knights, and talk about the few things that have gone up and down. I'll be honest, Games Workshop is conforming to their slight stereotype, they don't seem to have given the Chaos a lot of attention with this update. A few buffs to the Chaos Space Marines, very little for the Death Guard and Thousand Sons, a small nerf to Demons, and no points changes, but some interesting secondary objective changes that will make the lives of Chaos Knight players easier. Let's jump straight into it then, and see what we've got. So first up, we have the Chaos Space Marines, and they have four different buffs. Cultus, Chosen, the Chaos Land Raider and the Venom Crawler have all gone down. As an army, Chaos Space Marines have been somewhat middling in the pack. They have scraped out a fair few tournament results over 9th edition. In particular, things like Chaos Terminators with Lightning Claws and Combi Bolters seem to have gone down well, but I'd still say they're somewhere in the mid to lower tier. Maybe not quite as much on the back foot as armies like Gene Stealer Colts or Tau, but a bit more challenging to play with, particularly for a newer player not as familiar with all their overlapping buffs. Not unexpected that they got a few buffs in the chapter approved, but I think that maybe they could have gone a little bit further. Firstly, we have Cultists going down to 5 points from 6. Sounds like a small change, but actually percentage-wise it's really quite a big one. We're down 17%, just by literally changing that one point. To be honest, I think it was probably a good idea that they did choose to do this. 6 points did feel a bit on the high side. Just comparing them to a standard Imperial Guardsman or a Poxwalker really didn't feel that good at the moment. Dropping down to 5 does put them in line with Death Guard, and arguably they're a bit more of a useful choice than the Death Guard cultists right now. They don't have to worry about the core keyword yet, so they'll still be able to be affected by the vast majority of buffs, even if they don't get a Legion trait. Not really too much more to say about cultists. At 50 points they're far more attractive as a cheap unit, just for doing a few actions or doing a bit of screening. Next up we have the Chaos Chosen, they're down to 14 points from 15, a little buff, and now making them quite efficient as damage dealers, although they're really not all that tanky just with one wound and their 3 plus armour. In general, in stronger Chaos lists, Chosen don't seem to have been played quite so much, not compared with Terminators with their Lightning Claws and Combi Bolters. Having Chosen go down a point or so does make me wonder whether Lightning Claw Chosen could be a thing. 17 points seems kind of okay for a 4 attack model with Lightning Claw rerolls, maybe jumping out of a transport with World Eaters or Emperor's Children perhaps. I still think that they have their problems. Only 6 inch mobility isn't exactly great, it does mean that you need some sort of delivery mechanism, as they are at least fairly fragile, but if you can get them there, it looks like their damage for the points isn't too bad. Next up we have the Chaos Land Raider, going down to 265 points from 285, that's a 7% points cut, and I feel about the same as with the other Land Raider changes. It's a nice buff, makes them a bit less punishing if you are taking Land Raiders, but still doesn't really fix the underlying flaw with the Land Raider, that you're paying a lot of points to put lots of guns on a tank, that you then want to drive towards the enemy in a place where they could lock you up. I'm not saying that they can't work, particularly with plenty of decent melee threats that the Chaos Marine army has, but I'm not convinced that we're going to be seeing loads of them run at tournaments or anything. Finally, and perhaps the most exciting buff out of any of these to come out, is the buff to the Venom Crawler. This thing has gone down a whopping 20 points, it started at 130, and now it's down to 110, so that's a big 16% points decrease. I think of all the changes, this one's perhaps the most exciting, as Venom Crawlers were kind of on the cusp of being quite good already. With things like the Master of Possession and the Lord Discordant, there's really quite a lot of good buffs to Demon Engines. Dropping down 20 points on quite a solid general purpose unit usually means that these guys are going to annoy your opponent more than their points cost really deserves. Now it's just 330 points to put a big 30 toughness 7 5 plus invul save wounds on the table. General purpose firepower in those excruciation cannons, a bit of melee, and they also have a couple of other buffs such as regenerating wounds and making the Master of Possession cast a little bit more reliably. Seems like a pretty decent investment for the points to me. I will be honest though, I find it curious that the Venom Crawler gets this much of a buff. It is one of the newer models in the Chaos lineup, and it's only available in the Chaos Space Rain Start Collecting box. I know Games Workshop absolutely does use rules to drive sales, but I do wonder if they want to shift quite a lot of these Star Collecting Chaos Space Marines before they replace it with a new box further down the line. It just seems a little bit suspect to me that it's getting this much of a buff when none of the other Demon Engines are. 
even though I would say it's on a reasonably level playing field with quite a few of them. In any case though, these are four helpful buffs to the Chaos Space Marines, an army of which I think certainly could do with them right now. I think that the Venom Crawler and the Cultist changes will definitely have an impact on competitive list building, and maybe Lightning Claw Chosen could be worth it. Moving on, we come to the Sons of Mortarian, and it seems that almost nothing has been touched since their codex. A single solitary points change is that Land Raiders have dropped to 265 points, just the same as all the other Chaos ones and the Loyalist versions. To be honest, I think that the Death Guard Codex is largely quite well internally balanced at the moment. Most of the options are fairly takeable, and I would have said that the weakest units in the book are probably the Land Raider and the Chaos Predator. Maybe if anything, Games Workshop might have taken 5 points off all the Predator tanks throughout the game. They do seem to be very rarely taken at the moment. I'm sure that if Chapter Approved had been coming out a few months back, I suspect that quite a lot of people would have been wanting Death Guard to be nerfed heavily. They did go through a phase of stomping tournaments flat left, right and centre, particularly with things like Mortarian and the Terminators looking very strong indeed. I sort of feel like the heat's off Death Guard a little bit now. The Drakari and Admech releases have served to make Death Guard look a bit less oppressive, and it more seems that codexes of this sort of power level will become the new normal, as opposed to be the exception to the rule. Next up we have the Thousand Sons, which Games Workshop updated in a post on their website, basically said that the new points cost in chapter approved don't count at the moment, they're ones that are only going to be available in the new codex. As it is, the only change again was the Lamb Raider, seeing the exact same change as the other two codexes. There seemed to be no other changes whatsoever, and even Chaos Cultists didn't get the same drop as the Chaos Space Marines ones do. They're still at 6 points, when the Chaos Space Marine and Death Guard ones are all down to 5. I think there's an absolute ton of interesting stuff in the new codex points changes, but I thought that reviewing an entire codex worth of points changes might be a little bit lengthy for this one, so I'm going to do that as an entire separate video, likely releasing tomorrow. There's plenty of interesting stuff, including a points cost for a new Infernal Master, the new HQ choice that's going to be coming out in that Fire and Magic box, so it'll be interesting to see what he can do. There's also a bunch of Legion Command upgrades as well, looks like ways to further augment sorcerers, make them things like battle psychers or thralls to greater powers. I'll certainly look forward to covering that tomorrow, feel free to subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see it, or just check back later. Next up we come to the Chaos Demons, of course we have Bellacore, whose points have been added at 360. I talked about him in an entire video this morning, so feel free to check that out as well. But overall it is looking like he is going to be very good in terms of both damage and durability at that points cost. We don't even know all of his abilities yet, he's going to have different psychic powers and different options for buffing and his warlord traits, and he is looking like he's going to be a very competitive addition to the Chaos Demons roster. Unfortunately, and quite disappointingly, the only other change to the Chaos Demons list is a nerf to the Lord of Change. Big Bird has gone up to 290 points, up from 270, a 7% increase, and a fairly appreciable nerf. Otherwise, literally nothing else in the Codex has changed, Kairos Fate Weaver remains the same. I strongly suspect that the Lord of Change nerf is due to the combo that can be put on him at the moment, the combination of the impossible robe for a 3 plus invul save, and the minus 1 damage warlord trait. Between the two you get a Lord of Change that's just incredibly hard to kill, and then you can combine that with one of the exalted greater demon traits, either for extra damage with spites, or yet more durability. To be honest, I'm not really the biggest fan of this nerf, I don't really think that standard Lords of Change are really all that powerful in themselves. For the points, they just seem like a reasonable deal for what you get. It's only when you layer the minus 1 damage, impossible robe for 3 plus save, and then the other buff, then I would say that they're arguably one of the strongest units in the Chaos Demon decks. For me though, changing the points cost just doesn't seem like the right way to fix that. If they really wanted it changed, it might be better just to change the way that the impossible robe works, or maybe not allow certain stacking combos. Just bumping up the points cost on the model means that it kind of punishes anyone who just wants to run the Lord of Change a bit more casually, and doesn't take the excessive durability combo. Otherwise, in the Demons Codex there's literally nothing else changed, I'd say that's a bit of a poor effort, as I feel like the Demons Dex has plenty of units that are kind of overcosted, even if they do have a few gems in amongst them. Things like Skull Cannons of Corn, Burning Chariots of Zinch, Screamers, Flesh Hounds, and several other picks, just seem like you're paying a bit over the odds for them, compared with choices in other codexes. Nobody really knows with Games Workshop quite how they decide to dole out these things, but maybe this book was partly written when Chaos Demons were actually doing quite well in tournaments. We had things like Triple Keepers of Secrets, loads of Nurglings, Beasts of Nurgle, and this Lord of Change, doing kind of okay, either monofaction or more commonly allied with other Chaos forces, though they have dropped off a fair bit since Dark Angels, Drakari, and Death Guard came out. 
Overall, I think I would have at least liked to shower in a few more small points buffs to things that don't really see much table time at the moment. Finally, last but not least for the Chaos Super Faction, we have the Chaos Knights, which is a nice simple review to make, as they've received absolutely no changes to their points cost, either for the regular Knights or their Forge World variants. Currently, I'd say their best units to watch are the War Dogs, the regular versions and the Moiraxes. They can achieve some pretty nice combos between Exploding Sixes and Melee, the Iconoclast buff to Melee for the ones with the Chain Cleavers, and Infernal in combination with Lightning Locks for some very hefty turn 1 firepower. The best big knight, as with the loyalists, I'd say is perhaps the Quest of Megara, though you can make some fun builds with knights with dual thermal cannons. It's not really the end of the story though, as I'd say that Chaos Knights have actually got quite a nice buff out of the chapter approved due to the Titan Hunter secondary being changed. Previously, to score the Titan Hunter victory points, you'd get 10 points if you killed one Lord of War, 12 points if you killed two, and then 15 points if you got three Lords of War killed. It just seemed like there was an excessive reward literally just for killing one knight. Now that one's been heavily nerfed though, you only get 4 victory points if you kill the first Lord of War, 9 victory points for the second, and you only get the full 15 if you take out 3. This should honestly save knights a fair amount of victory points in virtually every matchup, provided their knight army isn't actually being tabled. Not all that many armies are really taking up for massive toughness 8 critters, there's lots of Drakari and other more fragile things in the meta right now, so playing a lot of toughness 8 models can be a bit of a curveball. It means that downing even two knights over the course of the game could be quite a challenge, and even if you do, that's only going to get you 9 victory points rather than the 12 that it would have got before. The difference between 4 and 10 is also massive if the opponent only manages to kill one of your knights. I still think that the Chaos Knights and their Imperial counterparts will be struggling on primaries, but this still gives their faction a much needed lift. As one of the armies that very rarely wins tournaments, it's good to have them going in the right direction. So that brings us to the end of our Chaos Changes for Chapter Approved 2021. Please let me know what you think down in the video comments below. Do you like the changes? Do you dislike them? Are you going to be looking to pick up Venom Crawlers now? Look forward to hearing what you have to say. And as I said before, feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics if you would like to hear about some Thousand Sons tomorrow. Finally, I'd just like to round up by mentioning one way that you can help support the channel, which is my Element Games affiliate link, which you can find down in the video description. Making all these videos does take a fair amount of time, and one way that I can afford to is by people buying things through the Element Games affiliate link, which leads you to a discount retailer in the UK, and they give you 10-20% to off Games Workshop's miniatures. If you were thinking about ordering in some models sometime, I thoroughly recommend Element, they will always been really reliable for me, and if you do buy anything through them, a small amount goes to help support Allspets Tactics without costing you any more whatsoever. Can just be a way to help support the channel if you were thinking about buying something anyway. For people in the USA and Canada, I also have a similar Amazon link as well. That works in basically the exact same way. Click through, buy literally anything whatsoever off Amazon, and a small amount goes to help support Allspets Tactics. A massive thank you to you guys who have been using those, it is very much appreciated. In any case, thanks very much for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.